game? Hell yes. Yes, yes, yes. So do you guys want to go now? You guys want to fire off or do you want to you oh, wait? Oh, dude, for... let's go now. Come on. It's okay, so we're going to man. Okay, well, good morning, so, right? First of oh, all. Hold on one sec. I, give me one sec. I, Barricade, I put you at 200%. Are you as loud mistake. as you can be? That's a mistake. No, I can get much louder. Uh, I can count to 10. Long walks on the beach. Favorite color is blue. Um, yeah. One, two, three, 12, 17. Numbers, numbers. Test, test. Check one, two. Mike, how we doing? We okay? I, I'm, I'm cranking everything here. How's that, guys? That's better. Nice. Okay. We're in there. Okay. I'm going uh, to turn this off. Stand by. There we go. Nice. Good. Uh, Cooley, Lucky, can you guys chat? Yo, yo. Hi. Can you hear me? What's up? Sorry, I can finally hear you guys. So, Cooley, nice to hey, see you. Barricade, hey, what's going on? Good seeing going you. On, Mr. Lucky Luciano, the legend himself. <laughs> That's... A lot of legends on this call. A lot of legends. Hey, hey. A lot yeah. of legends and racks. <laughs> yeah, what the hell is that guy doing here? I, mean, come on. <laughs> I was two seconds from buying a blue hoodie just to keep it all clean work. I was going to have a shirt on for you, and I had the glasses ready to go. I had something for everybody because you have to do it, but I didn't. I just played it low-key, so. Thanks for being here, you guys. First of all, thanks for taking the invitation. I appreciate it. Uh, you're all here for a great reason. We, we all offer something different. I don't know why I'm here, but you got people that are really, really solid in this chat today. That's Cooley with PVP. You bring something amazing to the conversation. I think Rax, I, I don't know about everybody else. You'd have to defend yourself, but I think this guy, on, on top of just having a really good heartbeat on the Diablo community, played a shit ton of Diablo 3 that I couldn't do. So you might have, <laughs> you might have perspective there that I just... I would appreciate because I don't know it. And then you got then you got lucky. So when it comes to speed running, setting world records, looking good doing it, and also playing PD2, which is a great extension on like an already amazing game, you might have some insight that I wouldn't even consider for conversations like Diablo 4, how it could be better, yada yada. So your hands selected, and I love the time with you guys. So thank you for that, you know? This that's that's what I think would make a pretty cool podcast with you guys. So if you want to dig into it, we certainly can. The first question. I guess I want to throw at you guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. We oh. don't get to hear who oh. about Barricade. Oh. But, but, but before we start, this guy, legend of the community, D2R legend, oh. and, you know, coming into D4 hot with the, with the builds, with the community stuff, community events, and he put this whole thing together. He curated this, this you know, Incorrect. this great group of guys and, uh, and uh, just appreciate him and everything he does. The, the, the creator of the here, yeah. of people before pixels too I, I believe and dude just bringing the community together man wasn't that's what me. this guy does wasn't me it was the dude i man. see barricade i can just see him powering up like a dragon ball z <laughs> character look at him i love it he's oh, working yeah, yeah. on it man it's it's an effect he's working for, he's working <laughs> towards stuff. on his I got, stream i got stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no yeah, i appreciate it, it. listen um, listen like no bullshit. um we owe it to to the people that let us do this job right we got to put something out there for them we got to let them know what we think Sometimes it's nice just to meet these guys behind the scenes playing video games all the time. So I think it'd be a great opportunity. And you're very, you're very kind. Thank you. Just another guy in the wall here that gets to chat with cool people. So thank you. Thank you, Lucky, for trying. But hey, I'll get you last, okay? Uh, yeah. So the question is, where the hell is Diablo and Diablo 4? How'd that affect you guys? You buy the game, you get into it? What the fuck? What is that? Were you not expecting Diablo? How much of a letdown was that for you guys? For me, I was like, where's the guy? Where's the big red machine? What the hell? What are your thoughts? Yeah, dude, not having Diablo in a Diablo game still feels weird. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie, man. Like, is it? Isn't that the story? Some dude gets a thing jammed in his head, and then he walks east, and then gets some other dude with a thing jammed in his head. Like, that's that's Diablo, man. Where's the dude with the thing in his yeah, head? That's what I felt like. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Lucky, were you like blown away, Rax? What'd you guys think? Like, I, I will say, I will, say, I will give the team credit, um, some credit here before I blast them on this one. <laughs> uh, the, the, the story mode, I, th I thought the story was actually pretty compelling that they did come up with, uh, and I didn't necessarily think that with the route that they went with the campaign, uh, that Diablo needed to be there. But I'm playing a Diablo game, you know, the namesake of the title here, not having the key protagonist felt weird it, it just it just it still feels kind of weird not only is he not present in, in in the game physically but i don't even feel much of diablo's influ like influence in the world of sanctuary it's all it's it's almost all entirely lilith or anarius and um i i'm just i'm really feeling a lack of i don't know how there is at this point adding diablo to the game I, it will almost feel out of place because I don't feel him anywhere in the game currently, and it's it it is a bit strange to me. 
Yeah, so I'm I'm a silver lining kind of guy. So I agree with what Lucky said. I thought I thought the campaign felt really good. I mean, I thought on launch that was like the best part about the entire thing. The only good the only good thing that I can think of about Diablo not being in the game is when they do introduce them, they have a big opportunity. Now, as Lucky said, if you just interject Diablo in here, he's like, I don't know, the final boss of a campaign um in an expansion, that's not gonna be that's not going to be super exciting to me, but I'll tell you what was the most interesting version of Diablo for me ever was summoning Uber Diablo in Diablo 2, and Lucky knows a thing or two about that. Um, and like, if you don't know a lot about how it works, or if you don't know, like, if you don't have a really awesome build, you're not even going to kill him. So it's like this monumentous event. The whole screen is shaking. He drops like the best item in the entire game that everybody wants. They have an opportunity to do something incredible like that to really like put the fear of Diablo in everybody as a future addition. If they do that, man, I think the hype is going to be unreal. I think somebody did it with a level 17, man. I can't remember who, but <laughs> That's true. it was somebody. Level six, I think. Yeah. 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 Then, power, then Extimus, right? yeah. then Extimus one up <laughs> level six. It's a great point. So we were actually, it's a, it's, it's kind of a cool segue here. So it's a great point Rax makes and Lucky makes about like, how does Diablo feel in the universe and like in the actual game, if you, if you came in. Right. And so we were just discussing that on the stream the other day. It's like, he's the Lord of terror. Right. And so I don't know how you guys envision this big red, massive demon but i could imagine kind of like building it up how does it feel to game right like what's the journey for us to face this guy and for me like this might sound kind of off the wall because that's why i start the ideas like insane and then we dial it back for like what could actually be implemented but how about this so as you're like going through the world right you're you're getting towards diablo there's tons of demons because he's like defending himself right he's a big boss and then as you get closer and closer the demons are even scared so they're not even there and they're afraid of this guy's presence right and then you get in there and there's this huge red Diablo that we're all waiting to see, like just massive, snarling, huge guy. But when you fight this guy, this is where it gets kind of weird. He has the opportunity, if they do boss fights better, voice commands, like it's too late or you're my, you know, you're my, whatever you want to say. He grabs your guy. If you don't move, rips you in half, your character's gone. Like <laughs> you're dead. Like, he is so terrifying. He will remove you from the game. Like you're gone. Like when I watched Diablo 4 content in the beginning, there was demons punching through the wall and like ripping heroes in half. I was like, holy shit, that game looks insane. I want to try that. Very punishing for people, but hey, what do you think about that? Like, there's definitely a, there's definitely a, like a, a ladder there. But what do you guys think about that concept? How terrifying would that be? Like, holy shit, I didn't dodge. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I will say that the, the bosses in Diablo 4 lack personality. I, I yeah. don't feel it when I fight any of the bosses. I thought that actually in the campaign, again, I'm, I'm going to keep coming back to the campaign because I actually think it's one of the best assets that Diablo 4 has in the skip campaign feature. I think it was one of the worst things that they did on launch yeah. when we kind of I think I know content. exactly where you're but going with this personality the, the, thing. The, the, the campaign, like the bosses in the campaign, I actually felt had so much more personality than the boss fights that we have now in Endgame where you're just going in you're spamming the materials you're, you're killing the boss in one hit they don't you don't even hear a sound line a cue nothing uh it, it, most people aren't even like do, doing the mechanics of the fights and and before you know it the, the fight is over and we just really lack any sort of meaningful boss fights with with really personality once you're skipping the campaign and just getting right into end game and and i think diablo would be a welcome addition to that but but um just one boss isn't going to do it. We, I think we need to revamp uh, a, a lot of the boss fights and, and just make them more interactive, give them more personality. Not even death can save you from me. One of the best lines uh, I think any boss has, has, has given, and, and we just we really don't get any of that in, in Diablo 4. And um, they, they're, they're forgettable, I think, a lot of the boss fights currently. Is. The, the dude on the Cerberus in the, in the campaign was, like, one of the coolest, <laughs> yes. was one of the coolest yeah. boss fights. I love I that like, boss. You know, you're like, you're like, where is he? Okay, I got to go find him. And, that, it, like, that, that was one of the coolest. And you don't see him. Like, he, he yeah. isn't even, like, a dungeon yeah. boss that you randomly, yeah. you know, can run into in one of these things. It was one of the coolest, most memorable boss fights. So what, what is his name? Astaroth or something? Like, Not yeah. Tomb Lord, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not too more. Yeah. <laughs> Just a different guy, yeah. Not yeah. seething aberration or whatever. Rax, what do you think? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, so when I think about that, like one of the one of the huge things is 
I, one of the huge things I think builds hype about boss fights is voice lines. I remember, I think it was yeah. in AQ40, you get to the end of AQ40 and you fight Cthune and you walk in and the first thing he says is, your friends will abandon you. And then he AOE mind yes, controls yes, yes. like the whole raid. I was like, holy shit, my yeah. friends actually are killing me. Like that's insane. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Lucky said. Um, a lot of the fight, like the only memorable fight for me was fighting Uber Lilith for five straight days and <laughs> dying 500 times in the beginning, just getting absolutely blasted by her. And I, I really miss things like that. I understand that the direction of the game is trying to appeal to everybody and Uber Lilith, a fight like that appeals to so few people. But not having a single encounter like that in the game, I do think takes some of the value away. To Barricade's specific idea of Diablo just actually deleting your character, uh, I mean, that's that's how it is for me every day that I play. That's how hardcore <laughs> works. So if we're going to do that in softcore, then the hardcore thing needs to be even worse. Like, if Diablo rips you in half, he needs to, like, delete all of your characters, or even worse, it just straight up deletes your account and you have to buy a new one. Like, we have to up the stakes for hardcore. So, so my, my it can't deep, just be the same. My deep end is your shallow end and you just send it right off in the ocean. It's like, yeah, see voice? I mean, your just, gear's you got to buy a new game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to buy a new game. Yeah, yeah, that's actually hilarious. No, it's sick. And you're right. You know, in the hardcore perspective, you don't want to be too punishing, but this is hilarious. It, you guys make great points, and I kind of totally agree. Like, the personality conversation is huge, but Path of Exile, we're going to throw it in there, right? Their bosses feel so much better, and there's a reason for that, right? Even if you don't hear this, the, the, the voice command before, you know, Eater of Worlds slaps your, your box off screen because you didn't hear it because you was too far away, at least there's an opportunity that in the game it actually has it, and you as a player can react instead of, like, lightning spires come out and congratulations, you're back at the lobby. Like, it feels bad, right? So Path of Exile does a great job with bosses, and I'd like to see more of that in Diablo 4. You guys have played it coolly. I don't think you played much, yeah? Uh, Path of Exile? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I played through, like, most of the campaign. But but not like you didn't do like uh like Eater of Worlds, Searing Exarch, that kind of thing, maybe no, not no. yet. Yeah. POE two. Yeah. I agree. I think the Diablo Four could use more. Totally. Okay, and yeah, you kinda yeah. you kinda had a good segue there. Uh, I think I think you brought it to the next point there, Rax. Not sure if you were trying to, but it was good. Uh, we have a list here, guys, that we're kinda going through. So you had a chance to uh this is going out to Rax to start off, to um do an interview with the devs, which is pretty awesome. And there's some questions you couldn't ask. And one of the questions on your list is I was kinda like going through it as you were reading it too, was who's the target audience? And I think for me, I think it's pretty obvious at this point. It's casual oriented, right? And so, what do you guys think about the target audience? Do you think it's casual oriented, or do you think it's for the blasters? Should it take a month to get a character to min max? Should you be able to do it in a weekend? What are your thoughts? It's kind of like a big, vague, generic question. But where are you at with this? Yeah. So, I, oh, whoever, go ahead. Go ahead, Lucky. Coolie, go. Coolie, go. <laughs> I, I think order. yeah. Like I, I think it's it's uh it's probably they they want the same they're they're going for the same audience as like poe and you know it's, it's all it's all the same players but i think that uh Riker actually hit the nail on the head and even went as far as to post this in the diablo partner discord where he complimented the devs for uh finally giving diablo 4 some sort of unique identity and i think that's that's been something that riker has been on for a while about like you know that D4 didn't feel like it had an identity amongst uh, among the the ARPG community. So I I don't think that they're really going for like a a dumbed down version of these other games. I don't think that that's really their goal. I think that they want it to be simple, like a lot simpler to understand than say PoE. Like it took me a little while to realize, oh shit, it doesn't really matter what character I start with. Like I got the same skill tree no matter what. It just matters where I start. You know, like, sure. And, and it's it's all so complicated that I think that they're they're trying to simplify that uh, to be, you know, that's that's sort of, in my opinion, one of the Diablo, uh, the, the Diablo staples, I guess, is like a simpler skill tree to some to some degree. So they're trying to simplify that. But I think that they still want that depth in character builds. I think that that might be something that they're still going for. Um. So I, I think they want both. I think they want it to be easy for people to start up and build a character and get to level 100. But I think to push it, and we see this in this season with the pits, that's when you really need to min-max your build and, and understand the fine mechanics about the game and like really what pushes it to the next level. Yeah, so uh, it's good points. So 
The reason why I think Diablo 4 is being successful now and they weren't successful earlier, they kind of alluded to this. Um, I think it was on one of their campfire chats right after season one. To me, as I as I get further and further into this and I watch like the development of all these games and what the audiences are saying about the different games, it really always just boils down to one thing. How fun is your game to play? It's all about fun. And one consistent theme that I've that I've noticed about these games is whenever you make everything accessible to a lot of people, and a lot of times, even if you overshoot something, you almost never get penalized. Um, so for example, when they make leveling easier, when they make a horrible miscalculation and ball lightning is way too strong, when uh, anything like that happens, people are usually having a lot of fun. The, the, the number of people that are upset about it are dwarfed by the people that are just blasting with it. We saw it a few days ago. They announced a big goblin event, and the goblins are nowhere to be found. It's not the March of the Goblins. It's like, where's Waldo, except for your, where's the goblin? You know, you can't find any. But then they release a patch, and they just start vomiting goblins everywhere, and everybody's having fun. I think Diablo is very, very focused on the fun aspect and is not as concerned with making the most mechanically difficult, hard to build characters out there. Um, so what I'm expecting for them going forward is for them to try to add depth while keeping fun at the top of their at the top of their radar. I think at the end of the day, Diablo 4 is about making money, which is not an inherently <clears throat> evil thing. But the way that they do that is to have people just have fun all the time logging into the game. And a, uh, there's a huge demographic that does not think logging into Path of Exile and theory crafting that huge tree is fun. Yeah, I, I, Cooley and, and Rax, but uh, they, they hit the nail on the head uh, with a lot of the points that I want to make too. And and <clears throat> uh, easy to learn, difficult to master was a theme that uh, Cooley had mentioned and, and Rax as well. Um, and, and, and Barricade, when you posed the question, you mentioned... Do we think it's casual or hardcore, you know, blaster friendly? And, and what's the target audience for Diablo 4? And, and I really don't like the casual versus hardcore conversation. It really rubs me the wrong way whenever that is the, the premise of what Diablo 4's target audience should be. Dar Diablo 4's target audience should be uh, somebody that wants to escape into the world of Sanctuary and play out whatever power fantasy they want to do. Uh, we can all have different goals for a season when we go into a new season. And, and as long as we're able to uh, achieve the goals that we want to achieve, playing the character that we want to play. If I want to throw lightning bolts, I want to be able to throw lightning bolts. I want to be as good as any other character in the game. If I want to rain down arrows or if I just want to be a barb, a thorns barb that gets hit and the enemies kill themselves. Like That's what the target audience should be. Uh, for Diablo 4, and we should all be able to get out, whether you're a, a, a beginner or an advanced player, we should all be able to get out of it what we want. And I think that <clears throat> should always be the the target audience for uh, Diablo 4 and any Diablo game in general. So, I don't entirely disagree. I, I think he's got some good points. Like, you, you can't, I guess, you can if you want, you can try to dismiss the conversation, but it's real. People consider themselves casual because they play a little bit, and some people play excessive amounts like others that's ridiculous and that's just what you do so you break it down but i get your point and i totally agree like a conversation we have all the time on my side is hey how deep in the pit does this build go it's like like this is pretty relevant to like to get to the, the game today how deep does that build go in the pit it's like well maybe the question should be like how deep have you gone in the pit with the character you have right because you're really only going up against yourself and we're kind of getting into the itemization conversation here but oftentimes people try to like you know as an example, what, what's Cooley doing out there? How deep has Cooley gone in the pits with that build? I want to be better than Cooley with that build. And so you try to mirror, mimic, and do better, right? And so you may not be able to do that if you're a casual player with less hours. Or, you know, RNG hits you real lucky and you get the best, you know, the best roll in the gear. So I guess that's why I broke down the question that way. But I get your point. And I totally agree with you. It should be your journey with the items in Sanctuary. And let's see what you do. Play the power fantasy you want. I totally agree. There isn't, there isn't really a leaderboard yet. This, it's uh, not an eSport, you know, right? It's not an yeah, eSport, right. yeah. But but th that's sort of the the uh, unofficial leaderboard, I think. I mean, perpetuated by I think Rob or and and uh, it, you know people like that. He features builds on his channel all the time from people around in the community that like 
have pushed uh, the next highest tier on this class or whatnot. And yeah. I think that's sort of the unofficial leaderboard at this point is like, what tier pit have you pushed on your build? And I don't know. I kind of like that uh, to some degree with with the end game. Like they don't quite have a leaderboard yet. But I mean, how easy would that be? Like to set this up, it's just like this character or these characters right here in a team pushed this tier pit. Like, you know, that's it. And that be that. Like, that's, I, I think it's There's... really cool. It's also has added sort of an unofficial end game chase. I shouldn't say unofficial. Pit is kind of like an end game chase now for D4. But like, it's added an unofficial leaderboard to it, which I, I think is, is kind of cool. There's like three awesome points you just made there. And, the, and I could interject that we could talk about all three things. One of which is like, should there be a leaderboard? Do you need SSF because of that? And how do you make it fair? Like these are, these are great conversations to get into, which is why I want to talk to you guys about it. Cause I've got positions on it, but you guys want to talk about leaderboard first, going to itemization SSF later. What do you guys want to get into? Yeah. I'm not following yeah. the script at all, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean... We're just, you don't have to, it's just there. Right. So we go. What do you think? Yeah. So to to tie the ideas together this is something this is something that i i continue to preach and it's just not happening and i I, re I really don't understand it so to bridge the two topics of casual and end game versus does diablo 4 actually have an end game with the pit and what are people actually doing with it i understand that uh for the last year, the Diablo 4 team has mostly been playing catch up, and it's been in kind of some of the worst ways ever that you de never want to do in development, right? You don't ever want to make something and then realize, oh, I got to remake it again. Oh, I got to redo resistances. I got to redo armor. I got to redo items. Oh, these uber uniques that we made, uh, Ring of the Starless Skies, this ring sucks, so I got to redo it. So... They're trying to, again, build the fun into the game, get all the masses in there, and they finally are starting to do that. So I understand why their development has gone the way that it's gone. But I think there's a huge missing piece in this game where they have almost entirely abandoned all competitive aspects of the game in every way. <clears throat> Not having a leaderboard in your, in your only endgame activity, and I don't consider the gauntlet an endgame activity, to me is just a mistake. Kind of like what Barricade said, whenever somebody, like, I, I'll tell people, I think pound for pound, double swing Dust Devil's Barb is the best build in the game. And the next question that people ask me is, okay, I hear you, Rex, what level pit can it clear? And then I say, wait a minute, who, who cares? <laughs> if you can clear pit 61, you've beaten the game. If you can kill the uber bosses, you've beaten the game. They go, well, I want to push the pit. Okay, for what, though? There's no leaderboard. There's a title. There's some titles you can get, I guess. But there's really, they, Blizzard has completely removed the entire competitive aspect of the end game of Diablo. I really, really think that they're alienating a, a core part of the people who play their games. I, I'm genuinely shocked that it's still completely absent from the game. I, so to your question, should they have a leaderboard, da, 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 for the end game activities? I, I think you have to. I can't believe that it's not in the game right now. Yeah. Yeah, th that's a great point. And here's to go on that a little bit, maybe expand it, but also but also to not. It's going to be weird. I'll just I'll just say it, all right? Do it. So do it. So yeah. sometimes I think them like Blizzard not actually stating who the best people are or or whatnot, but the community taking over and highlighting it is probably the best thing that can happen. Uh, for the end game, as long as they still pay attention to it. So, for example, like it's cool for uh, content creators, the community in general, if there isn't necessarily a leaderboard in the game, but we know that this person has defeated this tier pit. Or if you take it back to Diablo 2, right? We have this this thing called the the DFC, the Diablo Fighting Championship, and it's just it's all high like the highest ranked pvp players in the world based on data that we've collected you know rule sets developed over time that's not in diablo 2 like it's not something that they can see the the ranks of it's something that the community says okay blizzard don't worry about it like you know we'll we'll handle this and suddenly i mean that has a lot of attention on it um it's the biggest it's it's you know i'm not trying to toot but it's like it's the biggest d2 pvp organization 
in D2. Like, it's it's the, like, oh, who's the DFC champ? Like, you know, who's got the belt right now? Like, you know, that's that's sort of the thing. And it's, it, how would Blizzard do that? You know, that, it's, a, it's a lot of side work for them, you know, to manage something like that. Instead, just focus on making the game better. Focus on balance and those things so the community can take it over. You know, that, like, that's... I think I think there's a fair point to doing that too. I mean, granted, seeing seeing that sort of thing in game, seeing what the highest uh, pit clear is, I think would be cool. But like, you know, as far as leaderboards go, I think they're. I, I'm I'm not sure if in game leaderboards are like uh, are as highly rated as a lot of people chalk them up to be. But I could be wrong. I, I never played Diablo three as much either, and I know that like. There, there was some stuff in there as well. Yeah. Was that a, was that a big thing? Like climbing, climbing leaderboards there. If, if Diablo three didn't have their leaderboards, the number of people who played it would have been cut down outrageously. The, the Diablo three didn't have anything going for it. Um, greater rifts were fun, but they were really never iterated on over ten years. The only thing was pushing the top thousand leaderboard of your, of your, of your class. <laughs> there was nothing else to do. So it would have been detrimental. So I really dislike anything that takes the player out from the game uh, in order to get, you know, a, a vibe or a sense of what is going on in the game that I play. I extremely dislike the fact that we don't have any sort of trade uh, options in game. We have that one trade channel. I don't like that we have to go somewhere else to find what the leaderboards are. I don't like that we don't have social yeah. features. It's all of this detracts from a strong community within the game because then you're sent somewhere else. You're not playing the game. You don't have the yeah. you don't have the game up, and it it's it, and you lose that sense of uh, just you know we're all playing a game together, and the whole the whole way that Diablo four was pitched was as, you know, this big, massive uh, online experience where you're all together. You're going to be running across someone else and you're going to be fighting these awesome world bosses together. And you have the hell tide and all these fun things that you can do together, but we're all just kind of doing them ourselves separately. And, uh, and then you can't even find out, you know, who's doing what well in the game itself, you have to go somewhere else to find it. And I just think that that's so counterintuitive. And, and there are so many things that the game is lacking uh, that, that should be in the game, like a leaderboard like Rax mentioned, that uh, I think is a really missed opportunity. And, well, and I hope that that gets fixed soon. So he, uh, let me throw one more thing in here to what Cooley said. So Cooley said, you know, if Blizzard does the leaderboards, that's nowhere near as cool as all the community stuff. So I think everybody here, especially Barricade, Barricade is like the, the number one cheerleader for He's like the main character of Earth over here. He's like <laughs> the, the number one. He's like the number one uh, event guy. I, I don't think these things are like, like exclusive to each other. I think the community, any diehard passionate community can find awesome ways to make amazing events for PVP or just because there's a pit leaderboard, it's not stopping a uh, Woody or something from making, Hey guys, we're going to make a, our own little competition in the pit. These are the rules you got till the end of the weekend, whoever posts the, the best recorded clear. I don't think this stops the community's creativity at all, but for some of the reasons lucky mentioned, and just for the fact that like, just for the ease of it, or just for the sake of, something for you to monitor and challenge yourself against not having a basic feature like a leaderboard or a, a ladder race. Like for example, in world of Warcraft, I know I, I used to play it religiously. I don't play it anymore, but when there's like a race, I I'm very interested in it. I'll watch it even though I don't play it just cause it's kind of exciting just to watch. They don't even have that. And they're the ones who invented the damn thing in Diablo two. How do we go 20 years in the future and somehow go backwards? Wait, it doesn't even make any sense. I hope you don't mind On that missing point. shoelaces because you just, you just lost a whole boot there, oh. buddy. Good for you. Oh. <laughs> how, how cool would this be, Rax? Uh, Rax Antrax is the first player to defeat Uber Lilith this season. Yes. That goes to the whole – that gets shout out to the whole game. I, I just That's the kind of stuff that brings – a community together it, it, you remember right. a season oh, that was the season that you know i was the one that was the first to defeat uber lilith or, and something like that and you get more personality everyone is more connected when when there are things like that i think poe does that with a couple different 
um, things on a, on a new season launch. They'll do announcements for who was the, the first to do this this task. And I just think so, that's so fun. I, I think we think. should have at least got a special title if you killed Uber Lilith in season zero. All right. That shit was hard. <laughs> no stagger, <laughs> though. Shit. No stagger cheese. But go, go. What do you, I think Rack's got a point there. Go ahead. So um, you, you want to know something that I think is extremely underutilized. It's kind of like Lucky's point. But so, okay, Path of Exile announces who reaches first to enter the zone, who is first to 90, first to 100, first to kill a boss. You want to know what would be so cool is if Blizzard, they did this with, uh, again, a, a, I think it's AQ in World of Warcraft, where the whole server had to come together to like open the gates of AQ. Yes. What if, uh, oh, I don't know, whenever, whenever the first person on hardcore, uh, kills uber lilith everyone for the rest of the season gets five percent extra xp everybody you just, you just get that buff forever so then it's like oh coolly killed uber lilith have five percent xp on us multiplicative for the rest of the season or blizzard could issue a challenge and say all right guys listen if you can kill uber lilith one million times this weekend we will give you uh we'll give you a, a fire horse We'll give everybody a fire horse. Go kill Lilith. Now all of a sudden the community is like, all right, what are the five best Uber Lilith builds? Okay, do we go in parties of four? Because then we can kill her real fast. Oh, by the way, we made Uber Lilith uh, drop more items while you're doing this event. Oh, congratulations. Oh, uh, oh, if you guys uh, do this challenge, we'll take 10% off the expansion price or something, anything, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anything, Let's cost man. Blizzard money. Yeah, yeah. Why, <laughs> why doesn't Blizzard think of like a thousand of these community things where everybody is actually invested in what is going on in the game? Uh, kill 50 million goblins in the next 10 days. And we'll give you a goblin pet that follows you around and picks up gold for you. I mean, oh, fucking, fucking anything, man. They, they ought to be. Well, I hope Blizzard's tuning well, in and writing this down right now. This is some idea dropping right there. This absolute I, gold, certain I, I, pun intended. Yeah. I think we all hope that they are, right? To your point earlier, they've had a hell of a dev cycle, right? They've been through some shit. And, like, I get it. So maybe they're just refactoring the res. They're refactoring armor. They're making items that are kind of interesting because... Gore's devastating grips are actually more like tickle fingers than it is devastating. It's like they've got to rework what's in the game. So I'm with you. I, I, I want this. I'm the cheerleader, like you said. I want this more than anybody. But those are the kinds of things that get me excited. And I'll just kind of chime in on the end point here. I do think Diablo 4, like Lucky said, should have, it should have events that, that are in the game. I don't want to go to a third-party service to get to it. it should, should, it's a no-brainer. It should be there. Leaderboards are great, in my opinion. I'm not necessarily a competitive guy. Main main like with, with all my main time, but I do like to compete against other people. I find it interesting because as we said earlier, after you get to a certain threshold in the game, you kind of beat the content. And so I, I agree. We're making a lot of points that are cohesive and I totally, I totally agree with most of them. I would love to have that. And that's why leaderboard needs to be there. Right? Like the like Cooley said, we can make our own events all day long, but there should be the official thing. I kind of shy away from non-official activities, you know, which is why I don't play like PD too. It's just not necessarily main, like mainly supported, but kind of a deviation there, but I, I, t I think you guys had some good points, but I would you love know, for that You know what too. would really help with that too is, yeah. is uh, instance joining in the game. This is something that oh. like uh, sort of, sort of people have been talking about with like party finders and stuff. And I'm, I'm not sure if the dev team like knows the best way to go about it. And I'm not sure if we do either. Right. But here's the, here's my biggest gripe with it all is that there's no way to really instance join people who are doing something. Right. No. So like, so in Diablo 2, for example, right, uh, with with PvP, it was great because if I wanted to duel somebody or if I wanted to put on an event, I could create a game. And granted, this goes back to the dreaded lobbies of of Diablo 2, which I think the, the people have moved away from uh, in, in recent history. But, I mean, they were useful to some degree. You could create a game that was in your instance, right, and people could join it to do that activity. You wouldn't run into any other random players you know, uh, unless they could crack the, the password of your game or something, you know, uh, which, yes. which is a whole other story in and of itself. But uh, you could join up in a game and you could find that person in the blood more and you could go duel them. Uh, you could go rush that person. You could help them beat their instance of the game or whatnot. Now you have to add somebody to your friends list. Like if I yes. want to duel somebody, if yes. I want to duel somebody in the community, and like especially this gets especially 
hilarious if if people are shit talking and they got some, they got some beef going on or whatnot. You know what they got to do before they before they duel each other? They got to add them. They got to add to their friends list so that they can go and join their game. It's like it's so strange. Like or being a clan. We, there yeah. Should, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, or or the clan, right? Exactly. Like there should be some sort of instance joining where it's just like I can create. You know, I, I'm in my instance of this game. It's out there. Someone can join it uh, and and do what I'm doing. I mean, it's almost there in the game. You have to switch over to somebody's somebody's world when you when you join their party. But like, so how gonna, how much better would that be if I could just broadcast really, what really, I'm doing? Really good. I got I got a couple points here. Just I guess we're talking about PvP. We all know that the social layer is non-existent. Basically, could be so much better. So let's just navigate into PvP for a second. I'm not sure how like into it you guys are, uh, but for me, I've always had this thing. Like I think that. PvP in Diablo is so cool because of Diablo 2, right? Hey, take my portal, man. No problem. I'll take you over to, like, I don't know, the World Stone Keep. I get in there, and I watch the guy take my portal, and then the second he goes through, I've already got five Hydras down. I press the swords, bang, we're hostile. That guy's clapped to pick up his gear away. I go, that's the old Wild West of Diablo 2. That's Sanctuary for me. That was some dubious shit going down, but it made it fun. Like, that's the heart pumping, and oh my god, we gotta move. So how does that translate in Diablo 4? Well, here's a concept. Let me see how this, how this hits the wall with you guys. What if Diablo 4 had, like, Actually, PvP arenas. 1v1, 2v2, 4v4, clan v clan activities. If the clan's winning, there's like a coliseum in the game of, of Sanctuary. Where people can like go there. You see your clan kind of banner waving in the wind, right? You can see which clan dominates the area. And if yeah. you go in there, you go to the coliseum, you kind of ride in on your horse. You click on a chair. You get a free roaming camera in the arena. You can see people fighting. You can bet on these fights. If you win, you can get like cosmetic rewards. If you're a champion of PvP, you get some like cosmetic stuff. Nothing account stuff. No pay to win, none of that shit. But just like, wow, that guy must be really good. He's got that gladiator gear. That sounds kind of cool. That was, that was step one. We can discuss that in a second. Step two, I love Elden Ring. If I bloodmark myself, I can free roam the world. People can invade any bit of my content, whether it's Lilith, a Nightmare Dungeon, a Helltide. And all of a sudden, you know, Lucky is now in my, is in my, my, my region. I'm like, oh shit. So here comes Lucky, right? And he's throwing daggers like crazy. And I don't know that because he just plays at a whole nother level. And I'm down on my ass. Okay. But if he beats me, he gets a reward for doing that, that thing. If I beat him, I get, I get additional rewards. The idea is like, bring some of that threat back into the world, right? What do you guys think about some of those takes? Go ahead. All right, lots to unpack there, all right? So, but first of all, with the, with the uh, Coliseum idea, the arena, bro, there's mobile games that have done this for years. Like, the, the arena is not hard. Like, I mean, it goes back to that instance joining of just like, you know, let's say there's some special vendor in town that you go to and, you know, you say, I want to join up 4v4, a 3v3, 2v2, 1v1, and you just queue up, right? Like, and it finds three other people to put on your team. It, you know, it gets another team of four and it says entering the arena, like, you know, and yeah. boom, there you go. Like, it's so simple that like mobile games have done it for years it's i i can't believe it's not in a lot more games like the the pvp arena it's a big chase i think for a lot of people um but as as far as that you also had mentioned pay to win we might want to table this one because this has a lot to it but uh there's always going to be that in my opinion there's always going to be the people saying that uh as long as there's free trade in the game i think free trade's a good thing um so I understand. You know, I understand where we're going. You, yeah, we you see where I'm at with it. Exactly, if you can yeah. trade items, people are always going to make the argument for pay to win, true. regardless of how true it is. Um, but, you know, there is that. And as far as the blood marking yourself and you're kind of hostile to the entire world, I love it. I, I love that. I hate in D4 that we have to go to these chaotic, uh, you know, fields of hatred where you really don't know who you're going to run into. Uh, you know, it's almost that that was what they was they were going for. But I've said this for a long time. The fields of hatred are is a lazy way to approach PvP. It's it's like lazy and unorganized. It's just like, all right, if you're blood marked or if you're doing this, like random people can come up. You can't have an organized duel with anybody because somebody else could be in the instance and come up and PK you. Like it's it's kind of like you know, it doesn't make any sense. But if if they made it so that if you blood marked yourself wherever you go in the world when you run into other players that have also blood marked themselves you you fight them like yeah. you know you the, i think that would be great like you're you're just hostile to other players if you join this instance like if you blood mark yourself and anyone else who has will fight you as well like i think cool. that's great good what do you guys think so uh i i'm going to be a little bit of a negative nancy on this one so first of all, I love PvP. Uh, okay. I 
grinded uh, gladiator many times, high warlord, hero, hero of the alliance, all, all that stuff. I lived, eaten everything pvp was my favorite thing in world of warcraft like dueling and diablo 2 um i think I, I like the ideas like all of these ideas i wish they were in diablo 4 i if i was a betting man i would say we're getting practically none of this i would say <laughs> maybe we could get out of everything that we've talked about i'd say maybe we can get challenge someone to a duel that might be a thing where it puts a little ring around you and you have a duel um but I, I don't think it's going to happen for a couple of reasons. First of all, Blizzard tried to implement Diablo 4 into the game, and I agree that it's not that there isn't an interest about PvP being in Diablo 4. It's, as Cooley said, the implementation of what the PvP was did not seem to attract very many people. And remember how the development cycle of Diablo 4 has gone over the last year? It's playing catch-up. We haven't even gotten... Yes the PVE thing right. Like right now, one year after the game is launched, PVE feels kind of good, but we're really still missing, as Lucky said earlier, so many core functions of the actual game. In one of the developer interviews, I think, it, I can't remember, I, it honestly might have been me. I, I can't, they all blend together. But I kind of asked them about the future of PVP. And the the sentiment that I got from the developers is, well, we could work on PvP. Do you guys want us to work on PvP? Kind of saying, guys, we, we need to build an endgame system. We need to build enchanting systems that are much more interesting than tempering, bricking, and masterworking, just clicking upgrade 12 times. We don't even have a leaderboard for the pit. We don't even have a, a trade function. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a priority thing. Because the PvP community has been disengaged from Diablo 4 because of Blizzard's implementation and the way the development cycle has gone, I'm going to be absolutely shocked if they're allocating resources to build a Colosseum and an arena system, even though I think it would be a cool idea. Well, also, I've said this on my stream before, too. I think that some some ideas, PvP included like that, they they fall their prioritization falls victim to survivor bias like in, in a lot of the games like so for example the pvp community might have given up quickly on on pvp if it's so far from being balanced that 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 crowd isn't going to vote on those polls isn't going to be vocal in in what they're saying because they you just lost them early right it, it's like you know the the survivor bias in case you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar but it's like the the things that don't survive for you to study are what you should what you could look at to improve the greater feel of the entire game right but if you're only studying the planes that come back with bullet holes that came back you know what i mean and and you're saying oh let's put more armor where those where the bullet holes are right like in well, you're not studying the planes that didn't come back where there wasn't armor, right, or where there wasn't attention to the, you know, to the to the greater build of what's going on. So I think that in prioritizing that, that and this is not, you know, specific to Blizzard devs. That I think oftentimes survivor bias takes over and what they focus on in the games is what the people that they're coming back for that stuff anyway. They haven't left your game. Uh, and you know they're they're talking about these things. What about the people that left because it was so badly balanced or unbalanced that they just didn't you didn't keep those players, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I I think I think that to see, I would love to see them experiment with that sort of thing and and to say you know what like yeah people aren't talking about this, uh, but it would be cool. And this is this is a new groundbreaking thing that we could do. And let's just see how it goes. Let's see if let's see if it attracts people. Let's add some rewards to it. Yeah. You know, let's, uh, you know, insert whatever you want here. I think that <clears throat> that whatever concept, be it PVP, be it something else, you, you throw it in there and you focus on it and you say, OK, let's allocate some resources to this and just see how it goes. The other stuff. People, the the planes are coming back, right? Yes. Uh, for yep. anyone familiar with the with the, the survivor bus, those planes are coming back, like good enough, right? Lucky, let's, what do you what work. do you think, Lucky? What do you think? So I actually think I've done a lot of PvP in Diablo games. Four v four GM it was like one of my favorite things to do GM, in yeah, sure. uh, yeah, yeah. in Diablo two LOD days. I've wasted more hours than I could count uh, doing PvP in Diablo games. I actually think the launch state of pvp and diablo 4 was incredibly impressive i, I actually yeah. thought that Agreed. you could have fun doing it 
Uh, and that's so difficult in an ARPG to actually release a somewhat balanced PVP thing just right on launch. It gave it to us right away. So I I'll say I was impressed. I'll say the ideas were fun, but I'm going to, uh, I agree a hundred percent, a hundred percent with Brax. It's just, the they're missing too many things in the game right now. Like you, you bring up queuing as a guild or a clan to go PVP against another clan. Why can't I queue up with my guild or clan to fight a world boss or a raid boss or something like that? Like th those are the things that should be in the game first before we start fighting each other. It's, it's unfortunate, but I, I really think that people that play RP RPGs just 90% don't care about PVP. It's just, it's just not, it's just not the, the core foundation of the game, what the players really care about. And, and that's not me. Like I, I love it, but I just think that the the reason we're not seeing the devs paying any attention to it is because they know as well as anyone that there's just other things that we need to focus on. The community is we're not yes. going to spend all these man hours working on PvP for for something that just a, it's it's a niche part of of ARPGs, and it's unfortunate. But I think that's just where where the the current state is, and there's so many more things we could do with. PVE that are are lacking right now. So sure, that's... that's that's why I also like the the greater point was instance joining. Like you know, is is I think where it all needs to start because you're you're right. I think there's probably a greater amount of people who would rather queue up to do a world boss or where the queue up to do Lilith or whatnot. I think that's where it starts, and it can kind of bridge out from there. It also, yeah. if you do instance joining, where you have like just this list of things that I can queue up for, right? you get a feel of what people want to do right it's it's good for studying the game as well on the devs end I, so i, I, I yeah. think you're right I, I think to put a like to, to put it up put a bow tie on this piece here i agree the game needs more itemization needs more interesting and diverse monster families and engaging fights to do we need different nightmare dungeons a reason to do nightmare dungeons that's fun i think hell tides are exciting now they could be even better um there's a lot more things that have to happen before i see this grand coliseum but I still want that grand coliseum okay like get that in there yeah. so can i can i throw yeah. one more before we change topic can i throw one more thing in here throw we haven't ahead. talked we haven't talked about the final boss of this idea really at all there's something even even more colossal that you would have to overcome in order to put this into diablo 4. you would have to convince senior leadership that you should put it in diablo 4. so let's take Cooley's, Cooley's example of survivor bias, when it, the whole board is looking at you and you're having a presentation about, you know, the things that you're going to make in the expansion, and you say, all right, well, we built this uh, PvP thing, which I pretty much agree with what Lucky said. Uh, for what PvP was in Diablo 4, it's, it's not the worst thing ever. You can go there and have a battle and collect the things and get some rewards. It's... It, it, and it also didn't seem, I mean, now there's thorns barbs, but it was more balanced than I thought it would, would be. So it, it wasn't even close to me to the worst thing that Diablo did on launch. But you're going to have to go to the board and say, you see all these cool ideas that I have? You're going to have to convince them that it's going to translate into revenue. And it's not just this will make you more money. It's this will make you more money than building this PVE thing. This will make you more money than expanding the shop in this way. And that boss to overcome them to get the green light to attempt this new idea, as you said, you know, the planes with bullet holes, you know, you got to study them and try something else. I don't know if the imagination is going to, I don't think you're going to be able to convince them that the imagine the imagination there is going to translate into more value than what they've already seen works. Like imagine if you had to go give that presentation and convince them, it would be almost impossible. Oh, I used to be a data guy. I do it. No problem. So this is what I would do. I would pull the number of people that had stopped playing for the season after, uh, you know, they, and the last few things they did, were a certain activity. Like, so for example, in the Abattoir of Zier, who stopped playing after they tried the Abattoir of Zier for the season? I was one of those people. I tried it like three or four times and I was like, yeah, fuck this. I was gone. <laughs> like, so pull people that did that. What was the last few activities that they did where they stopped playing, right? And, and then you bring that data to them and you, you say, uh, this many people did this activity. They were interested in it and they stopped playing because of it. So therefore... We can make the argument for money and we can say, 
if we kept this percentage of people by making this 50% better, we we have the opportunity to sell these people more cosmetics to, you know, uh, engage them. Uh, it's, it's, I think that's a start to it. Uh, all, all money conversations in that are often speculative. Uh, you know, so it's more of just showing where the people are because the people are where your money are at, is at. So like showing the activities that people did before they stopped playing would be a, would be a great way to, to highlight the, the, or to fight against the survivor bias. Yeah. So like I mean, if I was a board member and you presented me that data, that everything that you said sounds perfect. We released this activity, people quit. Let's study what they did before they quit and see if did this activity cause them to quit or was it burnout or whatever. But then we have to make the connection of somehow the new PVP idea is what's going to generate that result that you're looking for of them still logging in. And that connection is where I think you would, you would lose or not, not saying you specifically would lose, but where the conversation, where the, where the conversation falls apart because of what lucky said, it's kind of like, you know, we, we like PVP, we like PVE, we like Elden ring. We like all these different things, but every game can't have every, it can't be made for every single kind of, uh, activity and kind of, I, I really kind of agree with Lucky that I don't think they have built the bones of Diablo 4 to be a PvP game. I don't think that the that data to the correlation of PV, new PvP activities are the answer is easy to draw. Oh, for sure. The, the, and yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's we, very I think we true. We all agree. Yeah. 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 The bo the bones just the bones aren't there yet because they're they're just doing surgery, right? They're working on. It's a great point. Yeah. It's, it's a great point. Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move into something else if we're cool, just to move on to the next one. It was tempering items brought by Lucky. You brought this one up. So tempering items, right? Should temper items even brick in the first place? Should there be something in the game, like a super rare material that you can get access to, you find, it allows you to reset your tempers? Or another concept, what about reducing the overall item power so you like continuously retemper this thing, lowering your item by five item power every time you try because you're overheating the object, but you're trying to make it good. Got to be a bit of a kiss curse here. What do you guys think about tempering today? What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Go ahead, okay, so yeah, go ahead. I suggested this topic and I, I, I tried to think about it and articulate my thoughts on, on what I think should be, uh, you know, the best, the best result of, of this. Our items are a journey now, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> items. I really like that items are a journey. But the journey has to end somewhere, in my opinion. <laughs> and what items our journey has become now in Diablo 4 is that your journey just never ends. It's, it's almost like the Paragon system in Diablo 3, but put into your items now. You can't get 100% perfect items. It's just never going to happen. And without any sort of definitive end, it's just going to be, okay, one, now all I'm doing is masterworking over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again until I hit all of my three perfect masterworks on the perfect, uh, you know, affix. And that takes forever to do. If you're going to add in another element to that where you say, okay, now you can reset your tempers and it's going to take you another 20 hours to go reset your tempers. The tempers vary very significantly in Diablo 4, and you're just going to keep re-rolling until you get a max roll of your ideal temper. And, like, you're you're never going to just, like, have your gear and just be okay with your gear. And I don't know, like, when I think of Diablo 2, it was like, once I had my gear, I had my gear. And then it was a matter of me just, like, getting better at the game or doing something a little bit differently or finding efficiencies here and there. And, like, your skill came out rather than just how much time can you put into the game because that's going to be a hundred percent of what dictates how strong you are how good you are and that's just maybe a philosophical thing that i differ from uh, you know, maybe other people or how what they want to get out of arpgs if you just want to blast non-stop and it, like the system currently is is a pretty good one but i also think that for tempering specifically like action should have consequences uh, and I think that, you know, through tempering, we can, we have similar systems like it in, uh, like POE or uh, project Diablo two, where you corrupt an item and that's it. Like my action has a consequence. If I decide to temper again, if I decide to reroll that 
affix I already got on my tempering, I could lose it. And that like, it needs to be a, like, that's a real thing. And I, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I, I, I think more definitive ends to the life cycle of items is, is actually a good thing. And then I could just focus on playing the game and not, okay, I need to re-roll this item a thousand more times, uh, you know, to improve my stats on it by 3% or, or something like that. And it's just uh, not unfortunately, rewarding to me. Unfortunately, my item journey ends with most of those when I see an item drop with three great, great, greater affixes because my anxiety kicks in and I'm like, well, shit, I got to temper this thing and you know that's getting bricked. So, <laughs> so it's like you find a great item and immediately it's like... Well, it's got to survive the tempering process. I feel like that's where it is. I don't even, I don't re-roll stats on them. Like, I don't do anything but, like, the first thing we do, roll to see if you even get, it's not just a range of those tempers. It's, like, to see if you even get the specific abilities that you want. Especially if you built a sorceress this season and tried to do it on, like, a, on a sorceress where you have five different abilities for you know that can possibly roll in two different things that you need it's like yeah good luck you're gonna brick everything like it, it's just the odds say that you're just gonna brick everything that you find you know so you're not gonna get those things that you might need for you know for your build to go to the next level so like i think it's a good start you know it's a good start i, I like the the ending of an item journey somewhere where you have to settle on a range the, the gripe that I have with it, though, is the fact that you may not even get the abilities that you want at all. And you might not even have really a fair shake at getting the abilities that you want uh, with five shots at tempering on it. Yeah, so I, I think there's a lot of good points here. So so I the way that I approach this subject about like people are saying, should we change tempering is the first thing I do is I zoom way out. I zoom out and Diablo is now giving items some kind of path that you take from them, and they are trying to build some consequences of your actions into the game. High level, those ideas are amazing. So the first thing is you get like a double thumbs up from me for starting this process. Items are a journey, and there needs to be some kind of consequences. I think their current implementation is not ideal. We do need consequences, but it's kind of like Cooley was alluding to. Let's think about the process of an item. So we have tempering, we have the re-rolling, we have the gems, and we have the masterworking, and we have the imprinting. The gems and the re-rolling and the imprinting are foregone conclusions. You farm up, you can do it. The masterworking, a lot of people, I don't think, even target uh, the triple hit on the perfect affix. You get like the first level, and then you just... And then you just go with it. So I even think master working is more forgiving than tempering. But tempering is like the first step. And seven chances, it was, I think it's seven chances seven. Yeah. To, to even hit two things to even start the item's journey is not right. And so the way that I would explain this, uh, the way that I always try to think about this is if I'm going to the Blizzard board of directors and trying to say it's like, okay, you guys want people to play, the first, the, the only thing that matters is fun let me let, let's compare okay so i get a I get a triple greater affix item i'm so excited i feel anxiety i'm not excited as cooley said because now i have to temper it i brick it very very often now let's look at last epoch when i get a legendary potential item i'm going to slam something into it and for some reason that feels more fun and less bad than tempering because I'm only going to make it more powerful. And if I brick it, well, at least I still have a decent item. I can use it to farm the other ones. It's not really true. If you brick your tempering, you have lost such a colossal amount of damage right at the start of the item. You probably won't even replace it with your shitty one that has the right temperings. And then when I look at Path of Exile, there's so many little meticulous steps to it, and the upgrades are so incremental that it really is a journey because it's only at the very end where Lucky said, and in, in, at least in Path of Exile, where you can actually say, okay, I made the perfect item. Now do I want to corrupt it and see if I can hit, you know, the ultimate headhunter with the whatever it is, the two implicits or whatever. So in general, 
That was a good mm -hmm. attempt by Blizzard. It's not even close to the worst thing that I've seen implemented in Diablo 4. But tempering has a problem in that it's the first step. It's so crazy important that it's almost undermined most of the uniques in the game. And it's too brutal in the very beginning. So that's the way that I would phrase it and have the dev team look for a solution. But one final point, the, the thing that's very critical that Lucky made, the thing that you can't get rid of is your actions need to have a consequence. But don't brick my awesome item at the beginning before I've even done anything with the item. Mm. That's good a really good, really good point. <clears throat> so, yeah. so I guess like to, to open up this, this a little bit more, the concept to you guys, do you think Diablo could start to resurrect a fix for this position where there's a rare item that you could go deep in the pits 100 plus, and then you could might, you might actually acquire this thing that allows you to reset the temper. So you don't just lose that triple GA or that brick first step doesn't really happen. Cause Hey, guess what? You found that thing to make it a little bit better for my position here. I don't mind the temper process because I like the kiss curse. But I know it's not great. It's just a start, right? And I'm willing to start the system. But I, I don't know that I love the idea of a rare item allowing me to just get a jet, get out of jail free card. But do you guys think there could be something called, I don't know, Diablo's sweet magic box and you pick it up and bang, it resets your temper to zero. I don't think I, so. What do you yeah, think? I think another problem with, with that is kind of like what Rack said is like, where is it coming in the life cycle of not only the item, but your progression? If you're bricking your items, you're not going to be able to get to the item if it's in like the, the late stage pits and then people are all going to have to look up meta builds just to get this item so I can make my item for the class I want to play. And it's going to force you into, you know, playing maybe a, a class or a build you don't want to play. And, and, um, and then it's, it's just, it's really tough. It's really difficult to say, um, you know, where I, I think reevaluating where you do have this like bricking system is, is really the best option here. And, um, with this, li the life cycle of an item, the, the, like items taking so long an adverse effect of it has been, we can't just re-roll to another class so easily. It takes so long to like actually make these items yes. before you just threw another, a whole set of items on and you could play any other build in the game. But now it's like, oh, if I want to try a new build to go get this item, I, I'm going to have to do this whole process over again. I'm going to have to temper and brick half the items that I need for this other build variant. And then I've got to master work them all. And it's, it's going to take me so long to even try to respec to, to, to play a build that would be capable of going so deep into the pits. Cause not every build is going to be able to do it that uh, it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's very counterintuitive to like being able to try new builds, this new items are a journey system. I do like it, but as a theory crafter who likes to try a lot of different builds, it has handicapped me a little or just take it. It takes me a lot more time to be able to go and try out a new build now with how long items take to, to make and craft. But that that's my, my thoughts. Yeah. I mean, and, and think about what people are doing last too, right? We're master working. And a lot of times we're blowing through materials, just re-rolling like Rack said, trying to get that good first like buffed roll on one or two abilities and then you kind of finish it like that seems like a good item journey end and an essential soft bricking of an item right like where you've spent so much gold and so many materials like and this is this is how you feel after you've have, have obtained the the tempering uh you know that you need net coded said in your chat barricade just remove tempering limit like the problem solved but that's not it, it. it i'm hearing yeah, you guys talk and, and there's I don't two think things that's here. it yeah, there's I don't two think things that's just really it, quick. It, You're talking about having yeah. fun in Diablo 4 and the item journey. And when I hear, I hear the conversation, which is great so far, the item journey isn't necessarily fun because of the weight that it applies to you. You can't get out of town because you got to spend 10 years making that sword right or else your brick build doesn't work. So is the, I love the item journey too. It sounds like a good, a good way to go, but it sounds to me like from what we're hearing, it's like actually not fun because it's actually more restrictive, which is kind of interesting to hear. So, I, I so like my, my thought on it was that, uh, so imagine this, right? Right now, we have a, a soft limit on how many times we can tamper something, right? What if, Seven, yeah. thinking about what people do last in the item part of the journey and the consequences that exist, you know, riddle me this. What if there was just a monetary in-game gold tax for re-tempering or, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, re-tempering an item? And then there's a hard limit on how many times you can reset your master working, right? So like, think of that. 
Now you have basically the full item that you need, but you can only reset the master working five times. Like, and if you brick it, then like, I, I, and you I don't, don't get be what rude, you but want. I think I hate it. <laughs> really? I hate, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I, we're putting more restrictions on the item journey. It, it's less of a journey and more of a stop. It's like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. I'm not yeah. sure, but yeah. So, Oof. um, so the, the, I, I completely understand where the idea comes from of, Hey, a very rare material, you get to pit 100 or pit 61. It starts having a chance to drop to reset an item's tempering or, and then we start to explore how do we actually change tempering and master working. If I was running the Diablo 4 team and someone came with me to the idea, let's drop a rare material to reset it, I would give that a double thumbs down. And the reason why is you are not fixing the core problem. We identified the problem yes. of tempering is yeah. first, you brick it all the time. It's just creating anxiety and all that remains. And now you have to go farm this rare material that I, I want them to solve the problem now. So let me give you an idea. And this would apply more to tempering, but not to master working. So I'm not saying this is the best idea, but let's say for tempering in the end game, you reduce the number of tries tremendously. Instead of seven, let's say it's two or three. And when you roll tempering, let's say you roll natural finesse, right? That's that generic damage one. It rolls all of them, all of them. It rolls close, uh, distant, whatever, and then you have to choose one. But you have barely any tries. So you roll it and you're hoping for close and you get, oh, a minimum roll of close and then you get... Uh, a, a decent percent damage roll. And you're like, well, I guess uh, I'll take the close for now. You roll it the second time, and then you get like a little bit better of close. You're like, okay, I'll go with that. And then you don't get a, on the third try, last try, you don't get the better close, but you get a perfect percent damage roll. And you're like, all right, well, I need to make a decision here. And then you go with it. That at least, and the reason why a solution like that would be okay for tempering, but maybe not masterworking, is because tempering is first. The first step shouldn't be the most brutal step. Otherwise, you don't have a journey for items. If you break it at the start, you're screwed. So I'm okay with them taking a more relaxed approach like that to tempering, and I would be okay if they have a more severe approach to master working um, because it's the end game thing. But to me, the whole progression thing is backwards, and I don't want them to implement a Band-Aid for a bad system. I want you to make the system fun yes. and I want it to make sense. It's not super fun right now and it doesn't make sense at all. I completely agree. I agree. You, the band aid to the problem, I totally agree. Yeah. It's a great solution, it, you just said. Yeah. It feels like, like, like uh, last epoch esque, yeah, where you, you know what you're going to add. Like when you go for this process, something's getting in there that's kind of nice. You hope it's not damage to distant, right? But that's okay. And then you go, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, it's like, and, and, and we've seen historically that this is the answer. It's empirical data. It's not guessing. Oh, sorcerers suck in the beginning because they can't survive. Okay, let's give them more access to barrier. Oh, and uh, vulnerable and critical strike damage are, are everything. Oh, well, we can only apply vulnerable with Frost Nova. Let's try to give them more access to vulnerable. Oh, but now sorcerers can't survive because they can't get enough armor and resistances are bricked. Any kind of band-aid that they did doesn't solve it. You need yeah, to yeah. fix True. armor. You need to fix resistances. Yeah. You need to fix vulnerable <laughs> and critical strike damage. When we're running around picking up 900 yellows per hour, the only solution is stop making us pick nine up 900 yellows per hour. I don't want a filter for my yellows. I want you to stop dropping me 900 yellows. You know what I mean? <laughs> We've seen that these... <laughs> Major rework solutions work and the band-aids don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny. Something yeah, that good. POE does good. is uh, like the crafting bench, which is, I think, similar um, in, in a sense where you can uh, choose to use a little bit more of the resource that's required to craft or temper. And then you can, with that, increase your odds of sort of getting the temper that you want and uh, and and for people who are less or more risk averse, 
they may like to have that option of, okay, maybe it's going to take me a little bit longer to farm up these materials to start my tempering process. But I know that if I use 10 times the amount of tempering materials, maybe I could get a 50% better chance of getting the temper I actually want, as opposed to just a shot in the dark, random, I have no control over my destiny. You know, RNG, take the wheel, whatever I get, I get. And, uh, and I think we're all different. We all have different levels of risk aversion. And I think you should be able to play how you want. Like you should just have more options of playing the game, how you want to play. If you like, it doesn't have to be complete RNG every single time. Like there are ways to go about it that are equitable, that could make sense and just give you a better chance of getting the desired result that you want, but it's going to cost you whatever, whatever that is. I agree. Yeah, totally agree. So again, just good segue here. He's talking. So, so Rax brought up about, I don't want to pick up 900 items. And in, in one of our little overview things here, I wrote down game, like quality of life stuff, loot filter. I put obvious. I think, I think we tried less items. It didn't feel like that when I got there. I'd still like a loot filter. I understand that I'm going to need to get some resources in the game, but I still think Diablo 4 needs one. I think we all agree. Maybe we don't. And you can speak up if you don't think the game needs a loot filter. Yeah. Anybody, everybody else on board for a loot filter? We all want one? Loot filters are good? We even got a special guest that wants a loot filter. I see, filter. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doggy treats and loot filters, yeah, yeah, Everyone yeah. wants a loot filter, yeah. even the dogs. Right? Looking, oh, looking, so, still looking for so one. So cute. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so good. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so loot filters. I think, I think we, uh, we deserve it now. I, I do think that the take was right. Itemization changes feel good. But here we go. What do you guys think about character-specific stash tab? And then shared stash tabs. We saw this in other Diablo titles. This way, it's not so jam packed. And I'm going to throw another one in there. So character specific, uh, character specific stash tab. Excuse me. And then loot Tetris. Why the hell is my two handed sword the same size as my ring? I like old school. We're, t we're playing a fantasy game, right? That sword's big. It's not the same size as a ring. I know a lot of people don't like that take, and that's okay. You're, you're I think you just opinion. lost a thousand followers there, minimum. <laughs> that's like, fine. I mean, that's, that was just the the initial loss. That, that's fine because we get a better game overall. I'll be okay. I can weather the storm, right? So what are your thoughts? What do you guys think? <laughs> More stash tabs, the better. I, I don't care what you make them. Make uh, exactly. them character specific. Make them what, let me do what Anything. I want with my stash tabs. Gives me more of them and let me tabs? do whatever I want with them. Okay. Yeah. Would, you buy, would you buy five more tabs for five bucks? Should that be okay I would. in the game? I would, but I don't think that that's, I don't think you should have to. In Diablo 4, a game that you pay full price for. But, right. but And then that's just me personally. I would buy them. But Blizzard, don't do that to the, the player base, please. Gosh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, character specific tash, uh, stash tabs sound great. Uh, you know, I, I always like the inventory Tetris, but uh, it, it, I'm, I'm cool with how it is either way. Yeah. Uh, I think adding some sort of depth or some sort of visual, uh, greater visual to the larger items or whatnot is cool, but unpopular opinion, I know. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was, just give me a stash tabs, any flavor. I'll take this character. I'll take anything. Give me anything. Uh, yeah. I, I, making a Tetris thing just stops me from blasting. If you stop me from blasting, my fun goes down. I, you can always argue it from a fun going down perspective. I get, I get it, the immersion, but I don't, I don't want immersion. I, I want a blast. <laughs> I threw in the quality of life ones just as like a cover because I think that's like stuff we got to hear the way we think about it. This is one that I'm pretty passionate about, and it's not a, it's not a, a death sentence or anything like that. It's just I'm very passionate about the lack of creativity in uniques, and I'll describe what what creativity kind of feels like. Fractured winter glass, yeah. You actually have other spells that conjure other spells. It was a great new thing. You can make a fireball bounce. That's kind of cool, but all right. I think the game could be better, and I know they're working on a lot of stuff, but what are you, I want to hear what you guys think about the lack of creativity in Uniques and maybe implementing it and maybe something like this. What if you had an item? Because right now, first of all, the problem, Uniques have a hard time standing up against legendaries with tempering masterwork. But what if you had use of interplaying between the systems of paragon boards like glyphs, magical glyphs that nobody uses, and a unique that you equip. And if you have that magical glyph on a board and that unique equipped, you get a set power. This way you don't rely on full itemization to make your character feel better, but you interplay between the systems to make this other advantage happen. So as an example, I wear gloves called gloves of, I don't know, inner flame. And whenever I cast Hydra in the same place twice, Hydra becomes a flame dragon that moves around and it becomes Tiamat's champion. It's out for 30 seconds, okay? 
And I only get that if I make very specific decisions to em embrace that fantasy. What do you guys think about a concept of uniques are underpowered, not really selling the fantasy? And, and what are your thoughts on what I yeah, just throw out there? What do you think? Do I think you're on a way different creative planet than most people barricade with okay. ideas that are outworldly. Are you an alien? No. What is this? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Nope. You yeah, touched on a I, lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Whatever you want to go on. Go ahead. I, so uh, I love the idea, and you and I are definitely on the same page here. When I was uh, back when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, I got to try a super, super, super insanely early version of Diablo 4 to give them feedback wrote a huge document. And actually, a lot of what I wrote was almost exactly what Barricade just said. N not not so much like the interconnection between systems. That's like that's like the next level. Hopefully, we get that in like the expansion. I would love anything like that. But the reason why Path of Exile is fun to me is I'm looking for a mage blood. I'm looking for a headhunter. They're so rare. I'm never going to find them. But Maybe one day uh, I can hope to find enough currency to buy one of these, and then when you find them, you're, you're an absolute god. I am so sick of seeing legendary powers and uniques that say stuff like, basic skills give 10% damage, 30% attack speed. This is, the way, this is the way that I phrase it. You, like, Blizzard used to be at, at the top of the world for, like, designing games, right? And everyone has a different opinion, but a lot of people think that they aren't there anymore. So you probably grew up as a kid just dreaming of being a developer for Blizzard and, you know, world, working on World of Warcraft or Diablo, da 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 Okay, so we finally get there, and I understand there's upper management, that you're, like, shackled, corporate red tape all the time, but... When I see stuff like 30% attack speed, my question is, is that all that you've got? Like you went through your whole life wanting to work for Blizzard and that's what we have. What I want is something like, oh, uh, you have a unique where if you lay hydras down and then you cast a firewall, the firewall goes to your hydras, picks them up and turns it into like as, as this is actually one of my ideas, exactly what similar to what Barricade just said. And then your firewall is just like a turret for hydras that follows you around and also solves the problem that the fact that the loot spawns behind you. You have this yes. like fire dragon that you're conjuring with this unique. Like, I, again, it goes back to when you overdo something, we need to overdo it too much when Whirlwind is hitting for 10 trillion damage. That's not good for the game. But in general, as long as you don't over overshoot it too far, when you make something godly like that, people love it. it. It's It makes the game fun. So I think this is one of the absolute most critical things for Diablo 4 going forward. You've got to make uniques that do crazy ass shit that give you dopamine when you actually find them. Similar to the Uber uniques, like the only two Uber uniques that drop where I actually really feel like I got something are Shaco and Ring of the Starless Skies. And Ring of the Starless Skies used to blow. They had to change it. But even then, finding a Shaco or a Ring of the Starless Skies is nothing compared to a Mage Blood or a Headhunter. It's not the same. It's it's not the same level as finding a bear rune in Diablo no, 2. No. It's, well those so, two items you, you mentioned, they're not changing any they're just it's just more damage, right? Yes. So they're not even actually changing what's happening in the game itself. Maybe Starless Skies change how you play a little bit. But it, it, it just it just has damage. It's it's not dynamic. It's not special. Right. Well, look right. at Flame Weavers this season, where you know even just that mechanic, where laying down a, a firewall and shooting your fire bolt through it changes Splits. how the game inter like changes how you play the game. Yeah. You make entire setups in the in the early game or even late game around that. You know, and even just having a simple mechanic like that uh, to to literally alter the skills that you cast in the order that you cast them is makes for interesting gameplay what's, what yeah what sort of spawned all this like i guess was that i was i play a lot of i do a lot of community games i play with people all the time and i'm on a sorceress and i'm throwing down firewall or i'm making these conjurations come up and it would be so cool to have like if, if all four of us were playing right you guys anybody on a whirlwind barb you whirlwind through my flame wall your weapons are on fire i empower the way you play which makes you want to play with me which makes the team dynamic so much more interesting I know Diablo 4 is not there, but I'm willing to say, like, if we get there, then that's so much, that's so sick. Like, a chain yeah. build on a rogue, or, or excuse me, like a barb, where I chain them up, and then the rogue's there, drops caltrops, they, they're live bleeding, and I could drag them through. Like, it, th that kind of stuff is where I want to see an ARPG go. 
And so I had to throw this in for today's conversation because I just think it could make the game so much more diverse and better. I don't know that we're necessarily close, yeah. but I think it, it gets so much better for all of us if, in a fantasy perspective, that's where the game goes. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's Can a I, role-playing game, right? If you yeah. have a role on a team that you're playing and you're buffing the team, I think that's also something big that's missing Huge. from Diablo 4. Right now, one of the coolest builds that uh, one of my friends was amped up about was when he saw that you could build a support barb, a Z-barb, as they called it, yeah. uh, you know, in D3. For this season, and he could just chain people in pits. He could just he could just pixel people, you just and he's like, find "You guys friends. solve the problem." Yeah. You know, that's his role. That's his that's his job. And just imagine if every class had something like that, where you're like, "I I can't kill, but what I can do is help my team, help the help the uh, you know the the pack killer. I can help that person. And then when we get to the boss, there's a boss killer. I need to help that guy." Like, yep. you know, there's a role that you play on a team. I think if those builds existed and could significantly amplify the damage that another player does or whatnot is huge. Adds to that group mechanic and gameplay it would be nuts. Mm -hmm. Can I can I admit something? Rax, were you finished with your thought when you were talking about the Uber Uniques? I, I apologize. Um, was, no, was there... no, I have one final comment, but yeah. it's separate. So go ahead. Oh, um. Well, so my admission here is when, when they start talking about season four, uh, one of the notes in the campfire chats and in the chats they did with us was Blizzard said that we're going to double the amount of uniques that you get in season four. And uh, and then they showed the fractured winter glass and they showed scoundrels kiss ring for the rogue. And these were all uniques that were changing the way skills were. And I'm thinking oh my gosh, they're going through and doubling the amount of uniques that we already have in the game. Yeah. That's awesome. That's what this game needs so much. You're doubling like the, the cool items and you're, and they're going to be neat, like fra fractured winter glass, scoundrels kiss. And then it's like, actually, instead of getting one new unique this season, you're getting two new uniques this season. And that's <laughs> doubling the amount of uniques. And I just like kind of face palmed. And I don't know if anyone else interpreted it that way. If it was just me, I was being too hopeful. But like that's what this game needs. You need yeah. to just, I feel like it's so, so lacking in the amount of uniques that we even have that are even viable. I was so encouraged doubling the amount of uniques for season four. And it just meant we got two instead of one. And, and uh, pretty cool too, to though. <laughs> pretty cool too, though. <laughs> yeah, they, they were good. They yeah, were really yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, I get it. I, 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 we need more. I don't know. I think. Yep. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not a video game developer. So. I always have to keep myself in check here because, you know, it's uh, certainly way harder than anyone thinks that it is. But if I was in charge of the Diablo 4 team, let's say like the expansion, and I was having like a, a sit down with like the, the class designers. I want to just I want to just wipe the slate clean for a moment. Men in black, let's just wipe everything that, you know, and it, here are the here are the classes that we have in the game. Now, I want all of you to go back to your desk. And I want you to write down three crazy things that all of these could do in the game. So, oh, Mr. Druid Man, I want you to go back and I want you to look at Lightning Storm. And what's the craziest thing that Lightning Storm could do? Like, oh, you actually just make Lightning Storms all throughout the ceiling and it starts electrocuting and chaining through the entire dungeon. Or wh whatever is the craziest shit, the, the craziest shape shape shifting things you can come up with i want you to come back and then i want to look at it as a team and i want to see what are the, the just the craziest fantasies that we could put in the game and then once we've landed on those let's find a way to put them into the game and no i don't think the only way to build it into the game is just by here's a unique that you have to go find and now it does the cool thing it needs to be a balance is it legendary powers? Is it a unique? Is it a special tempering? Is it a crazy interaction between this glyph and this paragon board? But I want to see way crazier things in the game because the only metric that I'm trying to drive up is fun. If fun goes up, everybody wins. And this would be like my main directive here of how crazy can we make the game? And I think they've been kind of going in that direction. I really wish that they would double down on this way more. Yeah, I liked another thing you said, Barricade, a lot <clears throat> with the Paragon uh, interconnectivity with the uniques. That was su that's such a cool idea, man. I, I really like that one because right now I look at my Paragon board. I don't know if it's the same on other classes. I play a lot of Rogue. 
Blizzard says, we're going to get rid of all those damage on Tuesday affixes from all your items. Why is my whole Paragon board just other damage on Tuesday affixes? Why is that my only option in my Paragon board is, is just to get damage when something's affected by your trap damage when something yes. is is vulnerable chilled you know it's yeah. my whole paragon board has not been updated to, to this new philosophy of the game so it's an idea like you gave with the with almost you're creating like a pseudo set with your uniques and paragon is really cool i think sets in general though I i've been so scared of sets coming to diablo 4 let me tell you like for so long but i think what you propose is like almost this this set idea that i would love and welcome and i don't want gre those green set items in the no. game but uh, unless those are like your new things that you're just pair pairing with one paragon glyph maybe um i would appreciate those as sets but i don't want six of my items to be determined for me and that's going to be best in slot like I, your idea was great right. i, I so, loved so, it and so the paragon board needs a rework too i, I think and, yeah. and that should come soon I don't want all of my characters adventuring knowledge to translate the power in a game fantasy where it's only dictated by the sword that I use or the cool shoes that I got off that Goblin King, right? And so the idea would be simply, just to expand it a little bit more, what if you could go into the Paragon board and like, once you found the Goblin King's boots and you equipped the kick skill and you had the Paragon glyph called, I don't know, Dominion, when you kick something, you, hit, you kick it basically so hard that you have it fight for you. It's so disoriented, it doesn't know where the hell it is, and it fights for you for 10 seconds. That's player power, that's not necessarily a stat on your character, but it translates into a defensive layer. It's an offensive appreciation, like it's pretty cool. And if you shout, this guy's critting too, and like you start kicking the shit out of people in the room and they all work for you, right? It's like you become the Goblin King yourself. So like, it's, it's just not about like, like Rax is kind of alluding to. I don't think if all these guys went in the room and he's like, hey, what's the best cool lightning skill? 20% faster lightning strikes. High five, guys. We're going to lunch. Like, that's not it. It's got to be like, lightning is so erratic. It's like pulling people together. It's like, holy shit. Like, I'm bringing the guys together. Like, outside of like, you know, um, uh, whatever the skill that they have now. Petrify, where you pull them all in. What if they're so scared they turn to stone and they take 50% increased damage? Or, or like, they turn to stone and you become like this Medusa thing. If you face them, they kind of erode over time. Like, do cool shit. Like, cool shit. And that's kind of where that idea came in. And they're doing cool shit now. But I want even, like, more. And, and like, I, like I, I think we're all hearing it here more on the top and the deep end then bring it down so we can actually not be overpowered right that's that's where that whole conversation came in so yeah Let's be a uh, cognizant of time for i know rax yes. might have wanted to cover the um <clears throat> the the xbox live thing are you, are yeah. you good on time rax you want to do i mean I, final thoughts sure i mean yeah, i'm down for whatever yeah but it it is going on now we might get some diablo expansion news that that makes me happy me too yeah i'm looking forward to it i hope mephisto's in there uh, if he's not, whew, that's twice. That's two strikes. It's like, come on now. Give me, give me something. Give me a prime evil for the love of God. How about no, one thing you'd like first? to see? One yeah. thing we'd all like to see in the expansion um, announcement or um, coming coming soon? Endgame. <laughs> okay, cool. uh, I would just like to see damage over time effects stop killing my player. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's the only Diablo game in the history of Diablo games where poison kills me and it doesn't won me. All right. Just just fix it. And I don't even care what you do after that. All right. Diablo would be good, too. You know, throw him in there. Uh, ex expansion. I want a social layer. I want a group finding strategy that works to bring people together. That's what I want. That's what I'd like. That's me. And I got to say I thank think, you. Oh, go ahead. What do you got? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, rune words. So, so, something cool. So, 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 something cool to, rune you know. <laughs> I, oh, they have to do okay. it right. But, yeah, so, some some cool itemization thing just to give us another option besides this item journey that that we're on that maybe you could you could go another route with it and uh, and and not everything is just so linear. Not every item has the same journey. Maybe you can do something a little different and uh, yes. and get a, a really good item out of it as well. Uh, Didn't they originally talk the, about the that when they stuff. first started up with with D four? They were talking about doing runes they, in a really different way. Yeah, they announced rune words, and runes were not the same. They were a prefix and a suffix, and for, like we gave them feedback. Right, for first of all, the system sounds like it sucks. Second of all, it doesn't <laughs> sound like rune words. Why did you call it something that it isn't? And then they just scrapped the entire idea, but. I, they like the idea of rune words. I think we might get it in the expansion. I don't have any spoilers. I don't know anything. I, but hope I, 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 I think the probability is pretty high, actually. That's awesome. How dare you? I'm standing so up. I can only be so erect in this position. <laughs> Maybe we'll hear about it today. <laughs> hey. It, no, that's insane. I, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I think, it's high I think it's a high possibility. 
Yeah, the two awesome. things we didn't really get to dig into that I'd love to, but you know, that's time, right? We didn't talk about Rune's rune word implementation, what that means for Diablo. We didn't talk it's about good. What, yes, I think so overall. What does end game mean for everybody? Because I hear the term all the time, but end game for me was constantly farming one boss for loot. And I did that for a freaking decade. So that's now changed in the landscape of ARPGs. Unfortunately, like, you know, running out of time because there's stuff going on, but it would always be interesting to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this stuff. And I appreciate you guys taking the time and even replying was fucking insane. And you guys are great. And don't stop being amazing because we all love what you guys do. So thank you for that. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Barricade, for putting this all together, man. This was awesome coming together, chatting with you fellas and, uh, and you know, having a grand old time on, on the day of our Lord talking about devilish yeah. games. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. Thank, thanks for having me, guys. It was a pleasure. Enjoyed it. No problem. Uh, Elders, thank you. No problem, Lucky. Yeah, and guys, just really quick, uh, Blizzard did give each one of us a accelerated battle pass key to give away to our communities for listening in today. So however you want to go ahead and distribute those, let rip. I'm going to do it just after this, but... Uh, Thank you all so very much, man. Like I'm, I'm going to wrap my stream in about 10 minutes from now, but just thanks again. Appreciate the time. You guys are gods. Have a good one. Let's get some expansion <laughs> news. All right. Let's do it. Guys. Take G care, you guys. guys. GG's. Thanks again. Bye. Later. Woo. Good dudes.